It's my first event, so I'm a little bit nervous, but it's been lovely this morning seeing all of you, so it's great. This month's theme is sound. Um, we have Gareth Bonello, as we all know. Gareth also took part in our um, last year December, December's event, so we thought he'll be perfect for the sound theme. So we invited him as a speaker. So sponsors, global sponsors, that helps us run the event, uh, run Creator Mornings all around the world. Uh, MailChimp, Wix and Shutterstock. One of our global sponsors, Wix, has an amazing campaign right now, which is called Creative Store. Um, just need to tell you a little bit about that. Um, it's going to run till the 31st. If you're an artist, illustrator or designer, please check out um, the campaign. You can find tweets about it or um, on our uh, Twitter feed and on creatormornings.com as well. Um, our local sponsors is Monotype. Monotype's been um, our sponsor for over a year now, so we're very grateful for that. Um, Illustrate Digital is our sponsor this month, who's provided us with all the festivities that we've been enjoying this morning. <laughs> so thank you guys. Um, and then we have Storm and Shelter, who's videoing the event and doing an amazing job. Um, they are, we, we're so appreciative that they've now decided to be on board uh, with Creative Minds Cardiff to video all our events. We're so grateful for that. Thank you guys. Um, now it's Gareth. So we are really looking forward to hearing Gareth's story because he's got an amazing um, little background story on how he got into music and how he makes his music, what his inspirations are. Um, our conversations really made me think about the link between creativity and sound. So um, I'm sure you're going you're gonna to enjoy that. You know. Ooh, thank you. Thank you, Merlin. <laughs> Morning, everyone. Uh, Nadali Klawen. Um, that is not the world's smallest wine glass. It's just a perspective <laughs> thing. Um, so yeah, that's me. We don't need to see that. Um, and this is my album cover. This is the artwork of uh, Richard Chitty, who runs Bubble Wrap uh, Records and uh, a design agency called Control Alt Design. Um, so the theme today is sound, and um, so I was uh, sort of trying to think what I would do uh, sort of to um, talk about this, because obviously there's quite a large range of things you can do when you're talking about sound, especially like me if you're a musician. Um, but I thought it'd be fun to uh, play you some field recordings that I've made over the years and talk about how uh, listening to sounds other than music um, has sort of influenced uh, the way I write and the way I think about uh, sound. Um, I think it's funny with things like lots of the senses like smell and things like that people associate memories with smells don't they? Especially this time of year you get the smell of the Christmas tree, the smell of the turkey, all that kind of stuff and you kind of every year sort of the memories come flooding back but quite often I think people forget that sound does the same thing to you and you listen to so much um, but probably don't consciously process all of it but it's there somewhere and you, you hear certain things and it reminds you of certain things so I'll play some stuff in a second and we'll see. Um, oh, should I, should I click on this? It's a, it's, it's a busy GIF with lots of different things going on about sound. Um, so first thing I thought I'd do, since it's Christmas, uh, is these are a couple of photographs, photographs I took of some uh, birds. Uh, and when I first started uh, listening to sound, bird song was the first thing that I got into. And um, when I was a teenager, I used to go down to North Cardiff, down to um, the canal, and listen to the bird song and got quite fascinated by how you could tell the birds apart by the different songs they would sing. And actually that was a very kind of useful thing later on when I got into music because um, this is sort of a, a little knack to being able to extract a sound from a sort of a whole complex cacophony and identify it. And um, so I'm going to play you some bird song. These, this is Robin, assuming you all know the Robin, yeah? What about this one? Any ideas? This is a cold tit, or a cold, cold tit, and then that picture. Um, so here's a recording I made oh, okay, right, of the Dawn Chorus in Abergavenny uh, last year. Oh, right. This is me, this is me fiddling with the, with the microphone. Let's, there we go. 
There's also cows. So this is June, and June is peak time really. Birds are singing, they're trying to attract a mate, and first thing in the morning is when they all sing together. Um, there's a cow testing out the lungs. That's a good sound, isn't it? Yeah. So first thing in the morning, it's very quiet, so it's perfect time to sing because your sound carries a lot further. Um, they're all competing with each other. Now, the trick is with the dawn chorus like this is to focus in on different patterns that you hear repeated. So for example, if you listen carefully, you can hear one that sort of sounds a bit like a mid-range whistle, like And that one is a blackbird. There's a car. There's a wren, which is one of the loudest birds. And in a second, I'm going to play some isolated tracks of these songs. And then we'll play it again and see if you can hear it. But what I wanted to get a sense of is um, just that mixture of uh, different bird songs that you can hear first thing in the morning. I used to be a professional ornithologist. I used to do bird surveys. And this, well, my job was basically to walk around forests and listen to this, and then I identify all the different birds, write them down on a piece of paper, and then travel around England, it was northern England, uh, identifying the songs. So, if I play you some isolated tracks, you'll see how to do it. So, there was quite a few different birds singing there, quite a few different ones. Uh, one of the most obvious ones was the blackbird, and I'll play you his song now. Okay, so with that one, you're listening for the tone because it does vary the song quite a lot. There's no repeating pattern necessarily. It's the tone. It's almost like a human whistle, I think, the blackbird. And so with that one, you're listening for that sort of whistling tone. Um, did it remind anyone of a particular anything? Time of year, perhaps? Christmas? Christmassy, yeah. To me, it's, um, it's like an evening song, like a, a hot summer evening kind of when you're sitting down and there's something singing. It's usually a blackbird. Um, the robin is a little bit more whist whistly and a little bit more tinkly. If you're stumbling home late at night after a Christmas drink, uh, this would probably be the only one still singing. It's one of the few birds that sings all year round. Oh, so they're the birds who sat here like really early in the morning? Yes, yes. Actually, often they don't stop anymore because they get confused by streetlights and they keep on singing all day. Okay? So with the robin, you're listening for that tinkly quality, that kind of like high-pitched, slightly kind of um, almost piercing, whistly quality. Yeah? You can hear the difference between the blackbird and the robin there. This is a song thrush. This one varies his song, but he always repeats the same kind of things. So you have to listen for about two minutes and you'll hear him do the same things over and over again. So with this one, probably, he does this kind of So he's mixing it up. This is all the same bird. So you can hear he's mixing it up with a bit of whistly stuff and a bit of kind of more kind of calling stuff. Very similar in tone to the blackbird. It's quite hard to tell those two apart. And then the wren, this one always repeats the same thing. What I listen for is that trill, because the first bit is quite explosive. It's very only a tiny little bit, but it's really, really loud. Listen for that trill there, and then this one. Yeah, he's got two trills. One, then a little bit more, and then another trill. Listen again, you hear the two trills. Do you hear those two trills, yeah? So, 
what I, what I do is listen for little things like that, little indicators within the songs that get, tell you a little bit about what the, what the birds are. And so I became very good at this. Um, so if we listen back to the original Dawn Chorus. <coughs> there we go. Can you hear that wren there? So there's a blackbird. The wren will go in a minute. That trill, yeah. So I became very good at this, um, identifying different birds by their songs. And it made me really um, get into recording sound as well. And I think that is um, a really good way of paying attention to, to sounds because when you're recording a sound, you, you're, like take, you're taking a photograph of a moment, aren't you? And you're selecting certain things over others. Um, you're saying, right, this sound interests me. And it's interesting to sort of reflect on what it is that you, you pick to record and what you decide to exclude. Um, so um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to play you um, some field recordings I made in, in China. Um, I was in China in 2013 in the city of Chengdu, and I was doing a musical residency there. And I really wanted to um, create a sound portrait of the city. Um, so I decided to sort of record a lot of sounds. Um, so for example, um, this one. This is street vendors and uh, noodle sellers in the market. And um, the tinkling sound there is a guy advertising his wares. He's, um, he's a professional ear cleaner. And he has these two long metal things that he uses to clear people's wax out of their ears. And so they walk around the street knocking them together. So the sound tells people, you know, my business is here. You can come and you sit down. And they do this kind of extracting thing with these uh, things. This is me buying some noodles. Um, there's a guy, I, I spoke to, I don't speak Mandarin, but um, my uh, friend from China told me that there's people selling noodles and there's also a guy who's been quite philosophical about life and he's saying things about his past as well. <laughs> but, so, um, that is a particular type of, um, so this is different markets in China, that is a particular type of snack in China, which is this thing here. And what they do is they have these kind of sweet balls wrapped in, um, uh, sesame seeds and sugar and on the far side there is a sort of uh, spiced flour and traditionally what you have to do is you throw the balls against these little symbols you can see the six um, symbols here and you hit the symbols and then the balls fly into the flour and then uh, they get coated in the spice and then they sort of fry them a little bit and then they give them to you and also the base of that thing is hollow, so it makes a really big booming sound. And um, I dropped, deliberately dropped the sound there because it would have been really loud compared to everything else. So it interested me how in China, sound is a, um, used to sell things. Um, so you had the sort of, the, um, the guy doing the ear cleaning, you have the, uh, the people selling the balls. Also, there's um, a guy you'll hear in another, another recording in a minute, um, who has this kind of hard tack. And it's like a big lump of rock basically sweet rock you know like you get in the holidays and it's that ding 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 he's got um, a chisel and a hammer to break up the rock and sell it to you he's walking around with a big pile of it on a cart and he's just knocking them together to make this sound to tell you come and buy my sweet rock um, obviously as well in Chengdu um, there's a lot of building work going on and there's a lot of traffic all the time so I want to get a bit of that So this is a recording made from quite high up. Um, actually, this is doing a recording session. So there's people recording in the next room, and I, had a, I was having a break. And um, so it's getting the sound from above the city. Now, here's a really interesting one I found fascinating. This is people doing building work. But it's really rhythmic, which is what I liked about it. Um, everyone's kind of working to the, with each other, uh, creating this kind of rhythm. And even the sound of falling debris kind of adds to it. And then they shout every now and then to sort of tell you there's something coming down the pipe, you know. And the sound of building work is constant in Chengdu. You get this 
There's so much building going on all the time. The streets are really busy as well. But you can find areas of peace and tranquility, such as the temples. And here is an example. This is a Taoist temple. Just stick it all out of it. So this is a, um, a call to prayer, but also um, there's a donation box, and whenever somebody puts money in the donation box, they ring the bells. Um, so this is Wuhao Temple in the middle of uh, Chengdu. And um, I was writing um, an album about the life of a Chinese poet, Li Bai, and he talks about Taoism quite a lot in his poems, and he also talks about um, the sound of the bells. And the first track, I wanted to do two things with the first track. I wanted to do a sound portrait of Chengdu, and I wanted to start the story of Li Bai. And basically, the story begins with Li Bai leaving his home when he's about 17, and going to leaving the city and leaving people, and going to the tranquility of the mountains to look for inspiration. So I wanted to kind of reflect that journey. So I wanted the track to kind of go from that cacophony which you heard earlier on, with all the traffic and all the noise, to that kind of uh, peacefulness of the temple, um, but also the, the, the tranquility of nature. So um, I've got here a recording which I took in, um, in a park in Chengdu. And it's basically people playing chess um, and there they are, they're playing, some, playing chess. Um, but also, if surrounded by them, there are lots of uh, birds. If I play you... There we go. So they've got lots of um, birds in, in cages singing, but also they attracted wild birds as well. So there were also wild birds there singing as well. So this is a really interesting recording for me because it was a bit of a combination of the two. You had the sort of the, 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 the bustle and the noise of the guys playing chess, and also these birds going off in the background. Um, I suppose as well for me, being so attuned to British birds, I find bird song from a diff different country really fascinating because I've got no idea what they are and what they're doing. Um, whereas British birds, I know what's going on. <coughs> there we go. So, what I did was, um, I put all these things together. Now, the other big influence while I was in China was obviously the Chinese musicians that I met. So, um, this is uh, Miss, Miss Zhou, Zhou Yuanlin, and Sun Shanshu. And um, uh, Mr. Sun is a, a woodwind specialist, so he provided loads of different types of woodwind instruments. And Miss Zhou here is playing a pipa, uh, which is like a lute, really. Um, now, whenever I met anyone who could play anything, I would ask them, to play something for me and I'd record them. And then I tried to incorporate those into the way that I wrote when I was in China. So this is Miss Jo playing the pipa and it is uh, really remarkable um, music. So here you go. circular motion of our fingers. Really remarkable sound, isn't it? Um, as well, it's 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 got a distinctly character of um, particularly Chinese music, where it's it's very emotional and very um, uh, atmospheric, and not necessarily very tuneful. It's kind of a 
it is, it is tuneful, but in a, in, in a different way to what you would normally think of in terms of Western music. So to me, that was a really interesting uh, thing to listen to in China, was that kind of thing. And I've got here another example. This is uh, Miss, Miss Chan, Miss Jan Chan, and um, I don't know, is it this one, isn't it? So if I, Melin, if I press yes. next, it'll play. So this is uh, Guzeng, and um, instruments. You have to be so skillful to play this. watch Miss Chan play, play, play that all day. Um, so basically, I tried to incorporate this idea. There's, there's a traditional Chinese music has a five note scale, um, pentatonic scale. And so um, I kind of thought for the, for the track, the harmony track, what I would do is incorporate some of the instruments. So I play a little bit of a pipa track at the start where I'm trying to imitate some of Miss Jo's playing, not as good as uh, she can play, obviously. Um, but also, a repeating a frame, uh, just a five note refrain on the guitar, just the five notes. And then um, wonderful Seb Goldfinch, who's a composer uh, who I work with, wrote uh, fabulous uh, string parts and um, a flute part as well, um, which Jenny's played. Um, so I'm going to play you the track, and you can hear the different components that have gone into it. Um, I don't know if I'll play it all, but uh, you'll hear. The, there's the markets, there's the um, traffic, there's the building works, and that's the pipa. So this is the five notes.
birds in the park are starting to come in. There's a guy um, talking to the birds in the cage and he's saying ni hao, ni hao, just hello in Chinese because it's a, it's a mimic, so he's trying to get the bird to say ni hao. Um, but it's a really nice little thing to put in the recording, have him telling that. Again, he's trying to get it to copy him. from the temple coming in now. The idea was to set the scene really for the whole album. So you've got this Libai going from the city to the countryside, looking for inspiration, but also to do that sound portrait of the city. A uh, little thank you to um, Chengdu because they hosted me for almost two months. Um, and it was a lot of fun to do that kind of thing. And I've done it with new records as well. And I put, I put the birds on. Um, I've done recordings of uh, all kinds of things and stuck them on records. The Steelworks and Splot I've recorded down by uh, Intramorva. That's on Tethered for the Storm. Um, there we go. So, um, yeah, so I suppose what I'm trying to get at with the talk is just to sort of uh, say to open, open your ears a little bit, I suppose, and uh, get involved in listening to things a little bit like that. Uh, birdsong especially is great. I really recommend getting into birdsong. Um, but uh, I think it can be a really, really good uh, source of inspiration. And if you're listening, to, if you're working, if you're the type of person who works with music on or the radio on, then um, try listening to something completely different sometimes. I think that's a really good thing. Like I've recorded a storm in um, Australia and I work to that sometimes. And it's just lovely just to have this sort of storm going on, you know, and there's some ducks occasionally and then there's lightning and, you know, just kind of uh, takes you somewhere else. Um, so yeah, so uh, thank you. That's the end of the talk, I think. That was beautiful, thank you. Thank you. So Gareth's gonna play us a little Christmas song that we've uh, recently um, wrote and recorded, yeah, yeah. Um, and that is actually for a charity. Yeah. Would you like to? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, I've been working, um, I've been volunteering a little bit this year with a charity called Oasis Cardiff, which is down in Splot. Um, they provide uh, sort of, they're kind of a contact centre and they provide services to refugees and asylum seekers. And so people can go there and have English lessons, they can talk to uh, legal representation, they can just meet people, they can socialise. Um, it's, it's a really great place. <coughs> um, and it's all run by, mainly by it's lots of volunteers and they've got a small staff. So I've been raising money for them uh, this Christmas. Um, so I've got a bucket there. Well, we've got a bucket there. Um, also, I've got this track which I recorded, which um, uh, you can download from my Bandcamp page. If you go to www.thegentlegood, oh, there we go, uh, Bandcamp, um, it's called Dance for New Snow. Um, and it's basically just a Christmassy instrumental. And again, I was, when I was writing it, um, I was trying to think about. Where shall I go? Here? Is it right here? Yeah. Um, what kind of sounds make a Christmas song? Um, so I kind of took a lot of different bits and I think to me Christmas songs are kind of fun and jolly but then also have a serious bit at some point. 
Um, so I was thinking particularly of something like Oh Holy Night, you know, where you have this kind of um, very kind of dramatic, you know. That kind of stuff. Um, and also, where you also have these kind of really happy... happy kind of changes going from the, um, these kind of uh, distinctive sounds. So I kind of wrote this slightly mysterious, slightly sad, slightly happy Christmas song. Um, so yeah, if, you're, uh, if you have any uh, will, you can go, uh, will to it to do it, you can go download it from the uh, Bandcamp page uh, or donate into the bucket. So here we go. So.
There you go. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks to Melin and Sarah and Jenny and all at Cardiff uh, Creative for inviting me.